Mr Speaker, together we can do this and we can eradicate this disease. Go right. Let's do this. The House comes to oral questions. Question number one is in the name of the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she have confidence in her Minister of Justice and all of her government's justice policies and decisions? The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, yes and yes. Was the proposed repeal of three strikes discussed at a cabinet committee before the Justice Minister announced it was his intention to take it to yesterday's full cabinet? Uh, Mr Speaker, the reality is that a number of proposals to do with serious uh, reform of our justice system have been presented to cabinet committees. Uh, and the answer, the answer to those, that is that a number of those proposals are going to be uh, taken forward all the way to August in a serious kind. No, it is a uh, you wait and see. All right? It's not a yes, it's not a no, it's time for you to be patient. Well, point of order, Mr. Speaker. A, a point of order, the Honourable Speaker. I've asked, I think, a simple question about whether the repeal of three strikes went to our Cabinet Committee before full Cabinet consideration. And I, I just want an answer. Well, I, I thought I heard an answer. More than just addressed. It was about the future. The Honourable Simon Bridges. Does she agree with the Justice Minister that New Zealand First Ministers, quote, were around the Cabinet table when Cabinet made the decision to authorise me to develop a package that has a number of aspects in it, including looking at the three strikes law, it was a Cabinet decision? Yes. When the Justice Minister announced a proposed repeal of the three strikes law, did he breach clause 5.16 of the Cabinet Manual, which states, Ministers are responsible for ensuring consultation is undertaken in accordance with any coalition or support agreements entered into between political parties? No. So, did Andrew Little follow good consultation processes, or as he put it, quote, in order to get a proposal ready to go to Cabinet, you go through a variety of hoops, end quote, and New Zealand First Ministers simply changed their minds on the repeal of three strikes? Uh, can I just say that uh, Minister Little is a reforming minister, probably the most reformist minister we've had in decades, right, right. and because he has been putting all these ideas out from the public, there's no uh, reason for him to shrink from any of his statements at all. It looks like, and it is, an open government. So, order. Is the position quite clear then, uh, from the Prime Minister's perspective, that this went through good cabinet processes and consultation with support party parties, and they simply changed their mind? Uh, Mr. Speaker, the reality is, in this government, when people have heard all the facts, they do sometimes change their mind. What does that member do? <laughs> <laughs> Why was a cabinet paper? of proposed criminal justice reforms, including a repeal of three strikes, pulled from yesterday's Cabinet? Can I just say that it was pulled because the visionary Minister of Justice decided that he wanted it pulled, and we agreed with him. <laughs> and, and, just, and the Prime Minister being the we. Yeah, yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what, what then was decided when the Minister of Justice and the Deputy Prime Minister met yesterday morning to discuss the three strikes uh, repeal law? Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, uh, I can't answer that question for very obvious reasons. I simply wasn't there. <laughs> and therefore, and therefore I, I am not at liberty, I'm not at liberty like some members of Parliament, to take a wild guess. <laughs> Was... Was Andrew Little correct when he told Radio New Zealand this morning regarding the three strikes repeal law, quote, it's still going to be considered, we are doing a comprehensive reform package for, cr for criminal justice reform and all elements will be on the table? Uh, can I say, uh, 
Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, that it is the mark of wise government that you consider every possibility and every possibility's merits. That's what sound judicial reform looks like. It's not coming along with the bigoted neoliberal view of the world and seeking to implant that upon everybody whether they want it or not. So is the government's position that the three strikes uh, repeal legislation is still on ultimately the table? The Prime Minister made it very clear on morning report at which the member was, to which the member was uh, part of the audience what the government's position is and uh, it is that this is a matter that's off the table for now. But, but hang on, this is a government in for the long term. And I can quite envisage that downstream, as, as serious reforms do begin to work, and we don't have the prisons being a moral and fiscal failure, which was Bill Inglis's view, that we will look at eventually at all aspects of reform. Is the Prime Minister's position that the three strikes repeal law is not off the table for all time? Uh, Mr Speaker, with the greatest respect, I answer that question with great clarity. Uh, with great clarity, and I do hate repeating myself. <laughs> so Andrew Little was incorrect on Radio New, so New Zealand this morning when he said of the re three strikes repeal law, it's still going to be considered. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, I didn't hear uh, the transcript about which that member speaks. About which that member speaks? Peter? No, I said he was, not me. Again, you've got a listening problem, haven't you? Order. But mind you, order. it's only one of your minor problems at the moment. <laughs> point, point of order. A, a, point, a point of order, the Honourable Senator. I've asked uh, the uh, uh, Prime Minister a straight question about reported comments by the Justice Minister, and he's saying he didn't hear them. That's simply not addressing what I've asked him in a specific quote. And, and I think... The, the member's point of order would have had some merit if the answer had not been diverted by the person sitting on his right. I'm, I'm, I'm ruling that the Quite question was addressed. I might have been more supportive, but uh, Ms Bennett uh, interjected and Mr Peters responded to that, and it meant that the answer was possibly not as good as the member might have wanted. Point of order. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Does that ruling preclude the question being asked again and you're taking a different approach uh, to the answer to the question? Uh, it, doesn't it doesn't preclude the question being asked again. And if, the, if, if it's heard uh, without that sort of interjection, uh, then there'll be a higher standard for the reply. Is the three strikes repeal law still going to be considered as the Justice Minister has said this morning? It is the benchmark of wise government that all laws are constantly reviewed as to their veracity, as to their validity and as to their soundness. And in that sense, of course, that law will be looked at. Does she agree the three strikes law is the high watermark of policy stupidity? Uh, can I just say, um, uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, Every member of this parliament is entitled to their view. <laughs> it's the hallmark of a democracy. <laughs> and, 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 and a party that is capable, and a coalition that is capable of listening to different views. Why is the government having another advisory panel and summit on criminal justice rather than having Cabinet consider options and get on with what's required in this area? Because on behalf of the Prime Minister, we have seen a massive increase in our numbers in prison. Right. We face building a mega prison to accommodate between two and 3,000 people if we had not prepared to reform our laws to ensure they work. We're in danger of duplicating the American experience of massive incarceration right. for population. This is a reforming government that knows we can do far better for the victims, the taxpayers and indeed the country. In, in light of that answer, why then isn't the government repealing the three strikes legislation that the Minister of Justice uh, thinks is such stupid law? On behalf of the Prime Minister, this is no way to act as a Crown Prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> Order. Bearing in mind, he never ever held the warrant and is misclaiming that all the time. He never held the warrant. 
He never held the warrant, but he calls himself a Crown Prosecutor. Order, order. Every order. lawyer knows. Order. Yeah, the question, question will be asked again. Uh, in light of the previous answer, why then is the government not seeking or moving uh, to repeal the three strikes legislation? Mr Speaker, it was made very clear by the Prime Minister and others that it is at this time it is not a priority. That was very clearly set out. Cabinet process was better. The one around the three strikes repeal proposal or the decision to ban offshore oil and gas exploration? Mr. Speaker, apart from that being way off the mark of the primary question, I'll answer it. <laughs> the reality is both of those decisions were uh, typical of this government. They were marked. Yes. That's right. That's right. Order. Order. That's right. And uh, that's Order. right. Member will resume his seat. When I call for order, Mr Bennett, Mr Bridges, and most of his colleagues heard it and obeyed it, those members will as well. And I'll remind people that not being orderly when called to order is grossly disorderly. <laughs> Mr Peters. As I said, this, and I, I, I want to complete it. No, 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 the complete answer is this is typical of this government which has seen a serious rise in the government's polling position has seen a massive restoration out of Victoria University study in the confidence in government for the first time. We're above 50 per cent. In fact, we're above 60 per cent. Now, I don't want to take all the credit for that or the Prime Minister. As the Prime Minister, it's down, it's down to my colleagues. Question number two, Dr Deborah Russell. My question is to the...